Through reality television, we've been introduced to some of our favorite characters that we follow more closely than characters in any sitcom or drama. New York and Hottie from Flavor of Love have given us hundreds of memes and laughs throughout the years, while Nene Leakes has become a star in her own right. Although these are all real people, the antics they've involved themselves in while on television has definitely kept us watching. MTV's Making the Band 2 premiered in September 2002 and featured its own cast of memorable characters we still talk about to this day. We all remember Dylon Dillinger, better known by his stage name, Dylon Dilly, or simply Dylon, who was an overambitious member of the band who appeared to have a lot of growing up to do. It would seem like every episode of the season consisted of Dylon getting told off for missing shows and was accused of being selfish and lazy. Dylon would sometimes show up late to studio sessions or sometimes wouldn't show up at all. Now despite this, Dylon still had aspirations of being one of the greatest reggae artists of all time. The popularity of Dylon skyrocketed once Dave Chappelle played him in a parody sketch of making the band, further solidifying him as a reality television legend. With a passion of making music, Dylon has still not given up his dreams. Most recently, he would go on to release an album in 2017, proving to his fans why Dylon is all of the five best rappers of all time. Here's what happened to Dylon Dillinger from making the band too. Born in Brooklyn, but raised in Grenada, Dylon would already get a head start on writing music starting at 10 years old. After moving to Grenada, he became a DJ and a reggae selector at 16, following his dream of becoming an artist not too long after. In 2002, Dylon would audition along with 40,000 other contestants to be on the reality series Making the Band. In 2016, Vice interview, Dylon stated that he doesn't go back and listen to the album he helped create while on Making the Band. Although he still had love for Bad Boy and MTV, he was in a different space mentally at the time. Literally at 21, we were on the stoop smoking weed, hanging out, gangbanging, drinking, assault charges, and the next day, within 24 hours, with P. Diddy going on. A show that was watched by 50 million people. So mentally, when I go crazy and I get frustrated and all that, could y'all do that? Half of y'all couldn't even walk in those shoes. During his time on making the band, Dylon gained a reputation of being very ambitious, but stubborn at the same time. Throughout the season, he would often receive constructive criticism, but usually ended up making his music the way he wanted to and by his own terms. Sometimes Dylon's behavior would cause his peers to not take him seriously. When Wyclef Jean stopped by the studio to work with the band, Dylon revealed that he would rather work with him instead of Diddy. It would seem that Dylon's desperation to be in the industry would have no limits. This is one of many incidents that would be parodied in a season two episode of Chappelle's show. In the sketch, Chappelle would portray Diddy, Fonsworth Bentley, and Dylon, making fun of their antics that had transpired all season long. In 2016 interview with Vice, Dylan revealed how the sketch came to be. The overview is, I was on making the band and one day they told me to leave the house. When I left the house, Dave Chappelle came in and did a skit. He came up with his own originality watching the whole. He felt like Dylan at the time wasn't a group player and that he was about himself. He came up with his own accent imitating me and he said the group is all about Dylan. Dylon, Dylon, because I spit hot fire. Nothing that I actually said in person, but I respect and I love Dave Chappelle to death, even though I never met him. I gotta meet him one day. In the same interview, Dylon revealed that while at first the constant mentioning of the famous Chappelle show sketch did get to him, and he even got into a few fights, but now he's learned to live with it. For a while, I actually had physical fights over it. I've sent people to the hospital because of that. But now I just accept it and just say, let's roll with it. When you see certain products come out in the beginning of next year, you'll be surprised like, oh shit, he ran with it. Now I say in my songs, I am Mr. Spit Hot Fire. Fuck it, since y'all gonna keep saying that. But now the next question is, what is he up to? What kind of music does he have? Who's his squad? In September 2003, the band would release their own studio album titled, too Hot for TV, where Dylon was featured on four of the album's 18 tracks, not including interludes. The album would go on to be a certified gold. 
selling over 500,000 copies. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough to secure a future for the group as it was disbanded the following year. Upon breaking the group up, Diddy told audiences that he would continue to work with two members of the group, Ness and Babs, talking about letting Dylon go. Diddy said, I'm tired of his ass. Y'all are tired of his ass. We're all tired of his ass. It's over. In response to being let go, Dylon said, people gotta realize that us six had to walk for cheesecake. It's us six that read Russell Simmons' book outside. Us six live through the hazing period. No matter what any label or CEO wants to say, the band are family. We came in it together. We're always going to be working together in the future. Shortly after being dropped from the band, Dylon released a mixtape titled Life After Diddy, where he would criticize Diddy for how he handled the band. The song Dear Diddy would get the most attention. Dear Diddy is real controversial. It's Tupac ambitions as a writer. The music is responding to everything he said negative towards me. This is how I feel. It's not one of those things where it's a killing beef. It's just we have creative differences. I felt disrespected. So now you're going to feel disrespected. I got love for the label still. I just have to air a few things out and get it off my chest. Dylan never stopped making music after making the band but still remains in good spirits with MTV, Diddy, and Bad Boy. Dylon's efforts towards pursuing a solo career got him a deal under the name Dylon Dilly on Akon's label. His album Pain to Power was released in September 2017. In preparation for its release, Dylon orchestrated reuniting with everyone that had helped make him famous, including Wyclef Jean, Diddy, and of course, Dave Chappelle. A month before the album came out, Dylon checked off meeting Chappelle and would post the picture to Instagram captioning, For those who grew up watching me, you know how epic and amazing this was. My first time meeting Dave Chappelle. My album is coming out September 15th. I guess the stars lined up at the perfect time. Bless up to Wyclef Jean, Diddy, and everyone else I reunited with this year. Dylon would hear that Chappelle was hosting a party at the House of Vans and decided to crash it without an invite, bypassing security to meet the man who parodied him in the famous comedy sketch. In addition to releasing his own music, Dylon has appeared to keep in touch with Diddy from making the band. In 2019, Dylon revealed that he was invited to the Revolt Summit along with Babs. Around the same time, rumors of a reboot of the popular reality show began to circulate. However, since the 2020 coronavirus pandemic, those talks have disappeared. Making the Band was created in order to assemble members of the next big hip-hop group in America. The members that came from the series have all been etched in our memories, particularly Dylon, whose antics always stuck out. Dylon's talents had gotten him into the door with Bad Boy Records, and his commitment to spitting hot fire with music has continued today.